and the mask, color-coded for Pentecost, comes off as our camera person steps back. And welcome to Worship with Trinity St. James. I'm Pastor Jamie, and we begin today, as we always do, by affirming our faith. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. And I'm really grateful for that this week, because in so many ways it's been a week of chaos and confusion. In my case, some of that was brought on by my own forgetfulness and carelessness. You may have had some weeks like that when things just didn't go right. I suspect I'm not the only one. But even more, it's been the great disruption that we all know from the coronavirus, from events of violence and injustice in our world, for losses and illnesses and situations way beyond our control. So today on this Pentecost Sunday, I invite you to take a couple of deep breaths and remember that the Holy Spirit is the very breath of God. So I invite you as you inhale, breathe in God's love for you. And as you exhale, breathe out and cast your cares on the Lord. Now let these grace-filled words by the staff at Enfleshed call us into worship together. Come, Holy Spirit, and rouse the people of God. All the earth is groaning for restoration. Though the whirlwind of life tosses and turns us, we remember, out of chaos, the Spirit births new worlds. Come, Holy Spirit, and revive what has grown stale. Let the troubled be comforted. Let the apathetic be agitated. Wash away all that suppresses, silences, and condemns. Come, Spirit, come. We welcome your renewal among us. Let's pray. Wild and unruly one, so much around us is in flux. The world is changing and our lives are upended. Though we crave stability and security, give us the courage and patience to wait for your guidance. Sustain us through our discomfort and reveal the pathways to changes that last. Amen. I have not typically called the Holy Spirit the wild and unruly one. Yet, there is something a bit wild about the way the Spirit works. Some who watched that very first Pentecost long ago thought God's people were drunk, talking as they were all at once and in all different languages. It was an event more unruly than orderly. And then, there's the story from the Hebrew Bible in the book of Numbers. Listen to this episode of Moses and Joshua, a couple of the better known Old Testament leaders, and Eldad and Medad, some more obscure characters, and the work of an unruly spirit. And this is from Numbers chapter 11, verses 24 through 30. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered seventy elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. But they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad. And the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. And so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and me, Dad, are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, 
and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. Well, it started with the tent. Even while traveling across the wilderness on that long journey from slavery in Egypt to the new land God promised, the people stopped and at Moses' direction set up a tabernacle, a kind of church tent. Even in the wilderness, they needed the tent. It was quickly established as the place where Moses met with God. Once the tent was up, According to Numbers chapter 9, a cloud covered it by day and fire by night. The tent was God's place. It was a symbol of God's presence and it represented stability in the midst of change and a long journey. And that might be a lot like what the church building does for some of us in our time. One day, Moses gathered a good number of elders, 70, it tells us, at the tent. They all left the camp and went to the tent. Gathered there, God came and put some of the Spirit on each one of them. And when the Spirit rested on them, they prophesied. The tent was where God met people and moved people. Except for Eldad and Medad. They were still hanging out in the camp with all the other Israelites. They remained in the ordinary, everyday places of life. We might think of them today as the ones who were getting their groceries at Walmart or walking down the boulevard, or maybe they were the folks resting on their front porches or mowing their yards or stopping over at Casey's for a cup of coffee, carefully social distancing and wearing masks, of course. Well, whatever it was in those days, here's the weird thing. Eldad and Medad had the same kind of God encounter as the group at the tent. They prophesied like everyone else. That was not how things were supposed to work. It messed with the order. So a young man ran to Joshua and Moses and told them what was going on. He really kind of ratted on them. Joshua then complained to Moses, stop them. But Moses did not stop them. Moses said, are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Well, things are getting a little messy here. We can't just have anybody and everybody out prophesying all over the place. Except that Moses apparently thought that was just fine. There's a lot we don't know about this story. We don't know why Eldad and Medad did not go out to the tent. We don't know if they remained in the camp by choice or because for some reason they couldn't leave or couldn't get to the tent. It didn't matter. God still met them and they still prophesied. And oh, how we need the Eldads and Medads in the world because they are the ones, more than anybody, who see God in ordinary life. In an article on this passage at HuffPost.com, the writer William Flippin describes the Eldads and Medads among us this way. They are the voices from the coal mines, not the classrooms, from the streets, and not the sanctuaries, from the prisons, not the palaces. They are the people we might least expect to tell of God's goodness and glory. They are not the first place we look for the fire of God's Spirit. Yet there they were, and there that Spirit was. I don't mean to diminish the importance of the tabernacle, the tent, or even the church building. The tent was crucial for people making their way through a long wilderness. And also... So were Eldad and Medad. I keep turning to the Exodus story during this pandemic. Moses led his, led his people from slavery in Egypt to the new land God promised them. We have known what it's like to feel imprisoned in our homes, enslaved by strict social distancing and self-quarantines. Now we find ourselves in the wilderness of 
cautious or in some cases perhaps not so cautious reopening. The journey continues and still we don't know when we'll arrive or even what the new land or the new life will look like. We need the L dads and the me dads to show us God where we never thought to look. Or maybe once upon a time in our lives we did think to look some of those places but our training the judgment that even with the best intentions as the teaching of the church shut us down. Because we know that for many of us, it is important to gather at church. And sometimes those who have said, but I experience God on the golf course or in the forest or even worshiping at home on my computer screen, sometimes those have been okay, but sometimes they've been dismissed, those comments as rationalizing or self-indulgence, not really how God works. This story, well, guess what? God seems rather unconcerned about some of our rules. God's unruly spirit plops down on Eldad and me, Dad, in the camp, not the tent. The Spirit of God moves where it wills. It shows up at campgrounds and backyards, on golf courses, in living rooms, on computer screens, on the boat, on the river, wherever people are. God shows up in all kinds of places, and God sends the Holy Spirit to all kinds of people. As the theologians at Enfleshed put it, we can trust the spirit to break old patterns and break open new possibilities. Here's one way I've seen it happen in my life. Though I've had a Facebook page for quite a long time, I seldom use my personal page. I don't really like it. I've grumbled a lot about it. I've suffered with it because it's my job. Some of you L dads and me dads out there are the ones who are able to see social media as an avenue for ministry. I was still resisting. But then, just this summer, in the midst of a pandemic, some of you prophesied on Facebook. You didn't use the word prophesying, but you were seeing and sharing God's wonderful works. You posted pictures of butterfly gardens and growing vegetables a regal iris, a bee hovering on a flower, fresh asparagus and morel mushrooms, backyard wildlife. I was fascinated. I kept going back to look at those pictures again and again because every time I did, they lifted my spirits a bit. So now I have to confess to you all, somewhat reluctantly, that God, I think, just showed up on Facebook. But that's what the Spirit does. She alights on those she chooses. She blesses the ordinary places, the unexpected places, the scattered all over places, just as much as the tents and tabernacles and church buildings. So this week, watch for the L-dads and me-dads among us. Watch for the Spirit alighting on you, whether you're a Moses or a Joshua type, or an L dad or a me dad type. Because the Spirit will come. God has promised it. In the words of the prophet Joel, the second chapter, God said, I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. That's everybody. That's everywhere. God's Spirit is not bound by church buildings or traditions. It's not constrained by a pandemic. It's not tied to our rules comes when God wills. So we wait and we watch and we pray. Come, Spirit, come. We welcome your renewal among us. Amen. One of the places I'm pretty sure the Spirit shows up in our world is the Lynn Community Food Pantry. Today on the last Sunday of the month is our regular day at Trinity St. James when we receive a special offering for this food pantry. We used to call it the noisy offering. Now that we cannot accept coins, it's a quiet offering, but it's still very much needed to make a difference in the lives of those who are food insecure. 
So we invite you to give your offerings by mailing a check to the church or using our online giving link. And know that in this way, the Spirit is lighting on you and you are passing that Spirit, that flame to others. We continue be, to be grateful for these offerings and your regular offerings as well. So thank you. As we pray today, I invite you to name, perhaps aloud in your household or simply in silence, the joys and concerns that God places on your heart today. Holy Spirit of God, whisper words of comfort to those who mourn. Breathe your peace into those whose hearts are troubled. Send the fire of justice into those systems that harm and oppress. Alight on each one of us and stir the flames of love and compassion. Fuel us with the power of your mighty wind. Spirit of the living God, Fall afresh on us. And now, God, hear us as we pray together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Go now with this blessing again in the words from the gifted writers at In Flush. We go in faith that the Spirit is moving, even when we cannot perceive it. She is stirring in the quiet places. She is luring hearts with beauty and desire. She is growing like a fire, embers burning brighter each day. Let us open our hearts to her work of love, readying ourselves for endings and beginnings, for God's work is always brewing, and the holy potential for the renewal of all things surrounds us. As the Spirit goes with us, peace will be our companion. So be it. Amen. And have a great Sunday.